every day I've wondered, should I have gone back? Should I have kept oh, every single day? You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. Big Jeff, what's up, baby? What's up, man? One on one, we are back, Kansas City. What's up? We are back. Hay is in the barn. Regular season is upon us. Jeff, man, I'm so excited, brother. We're finally here. You know, you build up to this time of the year. And, and as a former player, I remember what this is like. You could feel it in the air, right? You, there's different, there's different, uh, see, the, the seasons really correspond to football. And, and like, yeah. you start to, like, in August or in July, you start to feel the heat and smell the grass and you know training camp's coming. And then, you know, it gets real hot in the middle of training camp and it has, that has its own feel. And now, here we go, regular season, it starts to cool down a little bit, starts to get a little bit dark a little bit earlier, and it's just there's just something about it. You're like, I, you wouldn't have to tell me what, what month it is, what day it is, and I can tell you, yep, football's, football's right around the corner just from the feel. Uh, so I'm over here with Goosebumps, man. So here we go. We're going to get into it. We got the cuts. We got Josh Gordon. We'll talk about Arizona. We got a lot of stuff on the about docket. Aaron Rodgers and drugs. Aaron Rodgers and drugs, man. That's All listen. Type of stuff, man. Here we go. Should we start with Aaron Rodgers and drugs? No, nah, man. We'll, we'll save. We'll that save last. it. All right, we'll yeah, save sure. it. Man, I'm a I'm a fan of some of the D R U G S. Hey, <laughs> before we get into it, Big Jeff, uh, Cookie Society, man. See, that was Cookie the drugs society. for a second. I was like, wait, what's the okay Cookie Society? We're coming up on September. Remind us again what's around the corner. Because anybody get right, in listen, order listen. now? This is a, a sneak peek, a world premiere. Since you guys are listening, before the first, you're going to get this before anybody else. Mm. We got peach cobbler this month, mm. coffee cake, triple chocolate, and we also have all the other good stuff. I know mm. I'm, missing, I'm missing another one, but it's going to be amazing. This is yes. by far my favorite menu. Um, I sound like a used car salesman. But visit cookiesociety.com, buy the merch, buy the Get cookies. If the you're merch. local in the DFW area, come in store. You might see me with my Super Bowl ring on. Duke might be in there. Duke, Duke might, might be in there. He might, might be in there having You a don't know who you there. might run into. You know? <laughs> it's, it's the who's who at Cookie Society. That's it, baby. Cookiesociety.com. Listen, here's what I'm going to do, Big Jeff. Uh, I'm going to put an order in so that next week when we film, either next week or the week after when we film, you and I will eat together. So Let's I'm going to get that. you some. Let's I'm going to get that. me some. And I'm going to do that as soon as we get done. We can eat together. And we can share with the audience what those are like. Right, we can do a live reaction. That, they, That's, they yeah, that. live yeah. reaction. That sounds great. Cookiesighted.com. Check them out. Ship nationwide. Big Jeff, here we go. So this is a really, like I said, it's an interesting time of year. It's a really fun time of year. Again, all of the sort of logistics and everything that gets to this point, all that stuff's done. And now you're staring down the barrel of the regular season. And there's just there's just no better feeling than this. The, all the preparation is real. The training is real. Everything that you're doing is building up to get ready for week one. And you're almost ready to explode because ever since the schedule came out months ago, all you've been talking about is Arizona. Get yeah. ready for Arizona. Get ready for Arizona. Now you're right that you're on the precipice of playing that game. As a player, you just you you just cannot wait to finally get this game going. But before we get into any of that, let's talk about – what it's like after that final cut day as a veteran guy when, or even as a rookie when you walk into that locker room. And that locker room is set up for 90 to 100 guys to start the season, right? So there's all these extra lockers, all this stuff, things everywhere. I mean, it's tight in there. Now you walk in and it is empty. It is just – I mean, there's 53 guys in there. Uh, I always remember walking in and being – every year, every year of my nine years I walked in and be like, man, Incredible. And all these guys that you just spent, you know, off season with and training camp with, there's a number of those guys that are gone. So, yeah. I mean, isn't it, isn't it just really a, sort of a, gosh, what's it's the an, word? It's an eerie feeling. It's, it's, yeah, uh, it is. It's one of those things where um, obviously we know we're all competing to make, make the roster be one of the 53. Right. But you get to know these guys as human beings. Um, you meet their families. Um, you hear about their goals and aspirations and just to see, 
you know, some people get other opportunities, but for some, for most, it's the end of the road. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the end of the road. There is no more opportunity. The NFL, it truly stands for not for long. Um, yeah. So you have to appreciate the opportunity while you have it and maximize it and, and don't take it for granted. I never, we talked about it before we start recording. I never, I always, I always, I always appreciate it, never took it for granted, but I never realized the magnitude of it. Mm. Um, the statistics behind it being one of, you know, almost 1,700 guys to make a roster. That's that's not that many guys. Year <laughs> after year, there's a draft. There's free agency. Right. Um, there's guys that come from different leagues. You got the, the CFL. You got the USFL. You got guys. There's competition everywhere. So to have appreciation and understand that it doesn't matter what your name is. We just saw Josh, Josh Gordon get released. You know, at a point in time, he was on track to be one of the greatest ever. I mean, right. um, ridiculous talent, but – there's so many factors. You have to play well. You have to right. stay healthy. It has to be a good fit. And on top of that, like <laughs> there's, it's a numbers game. You know, yeah. they may have a guy that they're paying that they can't release. Yeah. There's so many factors yeah. and, and so many things have to go right for you to be one of those 53 guys that um, I'm just really appreciative to be one of those. <clears throat> I'm appreciative that I was one of those guys for so long. And um, I hope the guys that made the team realize that it's truly a great opportunity and honor to be one of those guys you know i remember guys who were much uh, this to your point about just there's really an element of luck or yeah sort of divine providence depending on what you believe like the, the, because i remember there were a number of guys that were a lot better at football than i was that didn't make the team yeah um because they just like you said they just weren't in the right spots i mean all americans at division one schools that didn't make the team but here i am just some regular guy from maine but because my position group was full of older guys that they kind of offloaded at the end, yeah it was just perfect perfect fit and I, this really speaks to the importance of getting uh uh and this is a little bit of a tangent but i think it's worth bringing up you got to get a good agent you yeah. have to get agents that really can put you in the best position possible. I remember my agent, uh, the sixth round of the draft, I hadn't, you know, I, it looked like I wasn't going to get drafted. And he said, it's better for you now not to get drafted. I remember thinking, why? That's such a crazy thing. Like, I want to I want to get drafted. He's like, because we have a team picked out. And if they call, this is perfect for you. Like, we have all this, all this whole algorithm that they had put together to yeah. make sure that I was in the most uh, advantageous place to make the team uh and they were they were right if i would have got drafted by some of those teams that maybe were you know you know you have a lot of these teams that just draft who, the best player on the board yeah uh, but in the sixth or seventh round that doesn't matter you know nope. at, the, at that point and they'll just cut you they don't care if they have 11 dbs they'll just cut you so um having a good agent is really really important so shout out to buddy baker out there in indianapolis my agent um but no it's really a weird feeling and what so we were talking before you were obviously a, you were a much better football player than I am, but we talk about the different situations. And I never, I never got released in my career. Yeah, uh, I got, I took a pay cut, which we were laughing is pretty much getting released. But, but I never actually got cut. I, I was able to go nine years without getting cut. Um, you, you did have to experience yeah, stuff like so I got what released. Is the, what is that like as a vet? Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, obviously competitive. So, I mean, you don't want to get released because it. it in your mind, you're like, man, I'm better than these guys. Right. But the older you get, the more you understand the business. And I was fortunate enough to get cut by Kansas City, and I have a good relationship, you know, with yeah. the head coach, a position coach, and the general manager. So, you know, they gave me the decency of, of a sit down. It, you know, most guys, yeah. most organizations, they cut you, they give you a garbage bag, and they send you on the way. It's usually mm -hmm. a, an assistant that has nothing to do with football operations that tells you your time is up. But, right. you know, you know, my my position coach told me what was coming. And then I, the next person I spoke to was the actual GM in his office. And I, I got the rundown, the business behind. And it was one of those situations where it was a numbers game. You know, we yeah. were bringing a guy back from suspension. The O-line room had uh, 10 guys in it. Right. It was, it was loaded up. And although I was better than a lot of the guys in the room, it just came down to me being a Vesta veteran, meaning right. I had the opportunity to pick where I wanted to go if I were released. And the younger guys, you know, at the time we had just traded for – um, Frank Clark, mm. and then Patrick Mahomes was up for a payday. Chris Jones was up for a payday. Yeah. There was limited draft picks, so a lot of those younger guys were seen as draft capital. 
Mm. Even though you're better than them, we see them in the future. You're an older guy. We'll bring you back. We'll yeah. bring you. And at that point in my career, I was like, you know, thank you, but no, <laughs> no, no, thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm done. This is the end of the road for me. I appreciate the opportunity. And and it just was business from there. But sometimes, so sometimes it's not about the best guys. Sometimes it's about what's best for the team and the organization. And you know, it ain't even got. Sometimes it has nothing to do with that year. They're thinking right. Years in advance, these general managers have you know tough tasks uh, with team building and, and thinking about future drafts and possible moves. It's it's a constant game of movement. So yeah, that's interesting though. That that's that, like that's that's not really. I mean, it's getting cut, but you are a veteran who they were going to bring back. It's like so when you get yeah, an older you're guy, cut, though, like, that's tough. yeah, you're cut. You're 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 cut. I get it, but but it was like when you're an older guy like you are and you can pick where you want to go and they know they have a good relationship with you. That's almost like keeping a guy on the roster without him. Oh, without being. having him actually yeah. on the, ro- on like the roster. Like they're going to say Jeff's going to well, be they here. Do, they do that all the time. I mean, we yeah. see the 53 right now. I mean, you got a guy like Blake Bell who they have to carry on the roster. Right. Who then is going to be put on IR so he can come back later this year. And right. there's someone who you think is going to come back. Right. Um, and the same thing later down the road, it may be, a situation where Blake comes back, he's going to be one of those 53 and they're going to have to move someone off the roster. They may move on the practice squad. He may right. never come back, but these are things that, that Veach is thinking about. I'm so thankful that I don't have to make decisions like that. Right. Um, but these are decisions that are made. Um, they aren't taken lightly and there's so much that's put into, put into it that, you know, sometimes it's beyond our, our scope. Right. I remember our D line coach, I was debating about coming back for another uh, one more year and our D line coach saying, "Look, come in, um, and if so, if the, if it does end up being numbers a game, we'll do with you what we just what they would have probably done with you, Jeff, which, yeah. which is what they were really going to do with you, which is like we'll just cut you, but you hang out, and then we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back because eventually you're going to need the the veteran guy to come back, yeah. And especially on the D- somebody's going to get hurt, somebody's going to go down. We're going to need you to come back. Uh, but I couldn't convince my wife, so here yeah, we that, are. Yeah, and, that, and that's the tough part, like." Yeah. There's so many circumstances that the team have to deal with. Right. But as individual human beings, we have to make decisions too. So at, at that point in my career, um, I had been playing in Kansas City for two seasons without my family there. Right. And, and this That's is the tough. thing. This is a side of things that maybe fans don't see. My family's back home, and I know I'm making some money. And you can say, right. "Well, it's, it's it's a sacrifice," but it's it's tough. You know, I have kids that are starting school. They're doing events. They have you know sports, and I'm not there. So. Um, that was just tough on me. So mentally, I was just like, you know what? No matter how much I'm making, it's not worth missing that time. So if this is going to be it, I'm going to make that decision right now. Yeah, and, and that's no, and it and it's not without difficulty. No, it's right? definitely it's definitely difficult. It's, but I mean, it's it's bigger than us. I mean, if it was just just me, then I'd probably still be playing football right no, now. No, I. <laughs> Kansas City, my last, it was like March, April, I, where I was like, I hadn't officially retired. And they said, hey, no, come back. Here's contracts yeah. on the table. And I said, yeah, beautiful. Let's do it. Screw it. What am I going to do? And my wife said, I think I've said this before. My wife said, um, if you go, you're going by yourself. Like, yeah. I'm not, we're not taking everybody. And I was like, oh, I'm not, you can't, I'm not going to leave. You know, I don't, even, you know, I don't know if you're like me. I, I know you are like me, Jeff. Yeah, we're the same. <laughs> two two weeks is too much to be away from them, let alone that's, months and months and months. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'm, and that, I'm that's, a, that's a really tough transition for the entire family because, I mean, you know the NFL. You can be here one week. You could be somewhere else the next. Right. Um, so the one thing that we want for our families is stability. Right. Um, so my family's back in Texas, you know, with a stable life. The kids are in school. They don't have to worry about if dad gets cut, then the kids are – Hey, right. what will happen? Moving. All these questions and having to move. They have some stability. This is our home base. Um, right. So this is where they're going to be. And, and knowing that, you know, I'm on the back. I'm on the back end of my career. You know, I know right. I don't have that much time. You know, right. maybe three, four more years maximum. Um, so this is just the route we're taking as a family. This is the plan. And these are the conversations you have internally as a family. And you know, f- ultimately, you make a decision when that time comes. And when that time came for me, I just felt like. That was just a sign from God, and that was just yeah. just my way to say, "All right, it's time for me to be done." Yeah, no doubt. And and to be honest with you, I don't know if you feel this way, but there hasn't, and I can truly say this: there hasn't been a day since April of 2016 that I haven't questioned whether I made the right decision or not. Not at all. I, I haven't. No, no, I'm saying I'm there. I, I said that wrong. I have questioned 
every day I've wondered, should I have gone back? Should you I have kept oh, every single day? I and I get I get this almost like mourning, like this this like emptiness in my chest when I think about it. And it's gotten much better as we've gone as I've got like 2016, 2017. Those years were hell. My those first, first year, those first oh. two years for every guy. That's something that's not really talked about. No matter how successful you had, you know, no matter how successful your career was, no matter what you've accomplished, Super Bowls, tons of money, you you're done. Football you're done. is over. This is in some sort your identity. I don't care right. what you say. I don't care how, how much you can do post football. You get tied up into it. That's why Tom Brady's still playing. This man has right. seven Super Bowls. He's right. made boatloads of money. Um, he loves it, but not only does he love it, it's his identity. Right. And it's tough detaching yourself from football, something that you love so much you've done your entire life, and transition to something else because you're like, well, am I going to be as good in this as I was in football? And right. all these unanswered questions and uncertainties that it, it makes you afraid to take that leap. And um, some guys don't make that decision. Sometimes that decision is made for you, which makes it even tougher. Right. Um, because you don't see it coming sometimes and, and sometimes you think so you think yeah. so you think you think the you think the getting really getting cut and not getting asked back I think that's tougher I think that's, that's tougher I think that's tougher because for me uh, one thing that gave me I guess a peace of mind was you know I could have went back if I wanted to that's killed me though that, that that didn't kill me that actually made me feel good about it because I made the decision. Mm. I made the decision. I had the power in that case, as opposed to, oh, I still want to do this, but I just don't have the opportunity to do it. Mm. Um, I made the decision to be done, and I had things post football lined up, and I've had great success with it. Yeah. Um, but that still didn't make it any easier. The transition. It's it's just a tough transition. You just have to figure. You're a rookie all over again. You're figuring yeah. things out. You go from you know having this this routine. Um, being a being a football player, doing your job, being in the locker room is totally different than, you know, for me being a business owner or being more active as a father. Right. Now I go, now I'm taking my kids to school. I'm doing the day to day routines. I'm doing the tutoring. I'm, you know, getting them ready, fixing lunch. I got the checklist. Right. That's way different and way fucking harder than, you know, getting a three point stance. So it's it just it's just tough transitioning. Um, and that's the thing that I mean we all need to talk about because we all we're all gonna have to go through it. We all deal with it. Um, it's just being transparent and making sure that we articulate our feelings in that situation. I gotta not, st- and not just hold it in because it's hard. Don't, yeah. don't try to be macho. This is no, oh totally no, 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 no. I've I've cried so many times since then. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. Like, I gotta send this episode to some friends because I've told some guys, active guys, the exact opposite. I've said don't stop don't like yeah it sounds nice to say you went out on your own but then you always wonder should i have kept going why why did i give up on the greatest opportunity ever why did i say yeah, it is no to that I, th- I just think i think it depends on the individual yeah you know for, for me um there were many reasons why i played um, one was to secure financial yeah. financials for my family and make sure they're okay. I accomplished that. Uh, and then two was the winter Super Bowl, and I, I got that. So um, winning was important. Making money was important to me. Um, and for me, it was like risk versus reward. I had right. some injuries. I was dealing with some things concussion-wise, you know, years prior to before I made the decision to where I was thinking before then, maybe three years prior to my retirement, I was thinking about retiring. So I was mm. just thankful to get – you know, to get healthy and get another opportunity. And I did what I wanted to. So I was able to make that decision. Mm, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess I got to revisit it. Uh, I got to revisit the whole thing. I mean, it's something I, I still I struggle with. Like I said, every day I think about it. Every day I think about it. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I need to tell you about our friends at DraftKings. Kansas, DraftKings Sportsbook is coming to the Sunflower State. It won't be long until you can bet on all your favorite sports from the comfort of your own home. And to celebrate, all new customers will receive $100 in free bets when you sign up using code KCSN. Plus, one lucky customer will win a $100,000 free bet. That's right. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving you $100 in free bets just for signing up today. No deposit required. 
Soon you'll be able to bet on money lines, spreads, props, and more with one of the America's top-rated sportsbook apps, DraftKings Sportsbook. Plus, you'll be entered to win a $100,000 free bet when you sign up. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code KCSN to get $100 in free bets to use once mobile sports betting hits Kansas. Plus, one customer will win a $100,000 free bet. That's code KCSN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. Call 800-522-4700, must be 21 years or older, physically present in Kansas, eligibility restrictions apply, see terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook, subject to regulatory licensing requirements, one per customer, $100 issued as $425 free bets, no purchase necessary for sweepstakes, void where prohibited, ends first day DraftKings is allowed to operate in Kansas, see terms at DKNG.co slash KS. Now, let's get back to the show. But yeah, no, that was really good, Jeff. Let's let's transition. So, okay, so yeah, so here we go. 53-man roster is set. You yeah. know, some things will change, you know, 50 to 53, that those bottom spots will might rotate in and out. And you have the uh, extended uh, practice squad, which, which adds for, allows for more additions and more stuff, more moving stuff around. You know, Veach and Andy Reid are going to, Make sure that roster from top to bottom is just uh, perfect. Um, we're going into the res- regular season. What's interesting about this year, talking to Tucker, our producer, and I didn't realize this, there, there's 12 days between now and the first, first game. game. So when I was in the – when we were playing, Jeff, it might have – no, you were you – were, it was the same thing for you, I believe, yeah. where you got d- – that last Thursday game, that fourth preseason game was on a Thursday and then you'd have the weekend off and then you'd come back Monday and the following was, Sunday was the first game. It was like 10 days. Right. I think right now they think they had over maybe 14 plus days. Right. That, that's a long, that's a long time. In between that's, games. that's a long time. And so I, I'll be curious. I'm going to, st- I don't know if, if Andy Reid said anything about what, how they're going to approach it. I'm going to stick close to the notes because I'm curious to see what they're going to do going, you know, what is this 12 days look like because i know for some coaches this could you know just be training continuous training camp with hitting and and all Uh, that so like i think they'll use it to their advantage we talked about it before recording is is this is an opportunity for them to get ahead i know they don't want to look past the cardinals but it's a quick turnaround from arizona to a thursday night game against the chargers so -hmm. they're going to be prepping and getting things ready for that thursday night game and it's going to it's going to only benefit them and then also from a i guess a a player standpoint, you're able to be a fresher. You're right. getting that Thursday night game out the way immediately. Yeah. Um, so this is only going to help, and it's a tough. I mean, the first seven games are tough, man. Tough but game. It, it's tough. I mean, it's the toughest seven game stretch in NFL history, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's going to be. A, it's going to be. It's going to be a ride. Yeah, Jeff. I was looking at the. I was looking at the full schedule before we hopped on. I was like, damn, what? The, it's like <laughs> really hard, and then you know yeah. falls off. But man, the first. Yeah, like you said, seven, eight games going into the bye week are, are crazy. Um, they're, so they're, having that Thursday game early is interesting. I think it's good in one sense, and in another sense, I'm not, I wouldn't be as happy as a player. The, se- the sense I think is good is for what you said. So normally when you play a Thursday game during the regular season, say it's week, you know, later in the season, what the coaches will do is they won't really make this explicit, but – your install for the game before the Thursday night game, your their offense and defensive install, the plays that they're putting in, will be much larger than it normally is. And they do that not because you're going to call all those plays against the game you, you play on Sunday, against the team you play Sunday, but they want it to, to spill over so that they can almost start getting you ready for the Thursday night game without actually telling you they're getting you ready for the Thursday night game because you don't want guys looking beyond. So yeah. I remember you'd get that that big, you know, playbook before the Sunday before a Thursday night game, the, the, that Monday before the Sunday before a Thursday night game, and it would just be stacked. You know, it'd be well, why is there 120 calls instead of the normal 80 or something like that? Um, but again, it's just to rehearse those things and get you ready for the Thursday night game. With this 12 days going, in, so when it happens at the start of the season, with especially with 12 days to prep. I mean, we know what Andy Reid's like when he has all that time. Now it's not nearly as much of a, uh, a task 
you know, a hundred, you have so much more time. First off, you've been preparing for Arizona since whenever, when does the schedule come out? April or May? I mean, you've been preparing yeah, for them been preparing so, for since OTAs. So you're good to go. And now, you know, with 12 days, you can go in with 120 plays and install that stuff tomorrow or whenever they get back. And now boom, you know, you're ready to go. So the turnaround, uh, isn't nearly as much of an issue and, you know, physically you've only played you know, you're still going to be sore from the first game, but it's only yeah, the first game. A lot of those Thursday night games are difficult because they're week 10, 11, 12. Um, so, that, so that's why I like it. Why I dislike it is I always like the Thursday night games later in the season because it served as almost like an extra bye week. Because what you do, like, so say you have it week 10 or whatever. You, you have the Thursday night game. Then normally coaches will give you Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Come in Monday, do a 10-10-10, get a quick run in, get Tuesday off, and then get back to the regular schedule on Wednesday. That's five days. I mean, that's basically a bye week. Um, and so I always love, like, if you had a, a bye week, a regular bye week, week eight, and then three or four weeks later had the Thursday night game, and you had another five days, like, that was perfect. So that's the only thing I don't like about it is having it this early is, you know, again, you go into it much healthier. Uh, but you lose that sort of reprieve that you would normally get at the end of the season. I mean, yeah. I'm just babbling on. No, uh, you know, we get that, like <laughs> that makes perfect sense, though. I, I, I do remember having those later Thursday night games, and right. it sucked. You know, playing you know week ten and Thursday night, but right. that three day break was big, especially late in the year. Oh man, that oh I I used to love that. That was such such a nice break. Um, I, I'm laughing because I read in the comments and I'm thinking about it now. Like when we post these things, like why does Devito's fat ass just keep talking and Jeff never gets, <laughs> <laughs> never gets the word? Man, listen, man, I'm, I'm not a, I'm, hey, listen, I'm not a huge talker, man. I'm, oh I'm, I just, no, your I stuff's way better you. than I'm, mine. I play off of you, man. That's because I'm thinking. While you're talking, I'm like, what am I going to say next? <laughs> I'm on here forgetting that we're doing this for people, and I'm yeah, like just yeah. talking with you. That's a conversation, right. man. Let's finish with this. Um, Aaron Rodgers did a really interesting interview on the Joe Rogan podcast yeah. and uh, a lot of roads. We don't have to go down one road that I thought was interesting was uh, and Tucker told me this. I don't even remember hearing this, but so Aaron Rodgers was saying he would take Percocets before games. Yeah. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. That So I could take Vicodin before games and Vicodin didn't mess with my head. If I would have taken a Percocet, which is, mu I feel like, much better than a Vicodin, um, I would have fallen asleep on the bench. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how the hell he's taking I mean, Percocet. That's, that's probably Strong. why he's slowing down. He sees the game in slow motion. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> we thought he was just cool out there. He was high as a kite. <laughs> high as a kite, man. High as a kite. Per Percocet's like you have just had a surgery. He and never so gets he rattled. <laughs> nothing. He's... Good for him, man. But, like, it does bring up – and th this goes back to the Josh Gordon thing. And I had talked to Chris Long a while back, too, about this. Um, you know, guys doing what they need to do um, to stay physically with it. You know I mean? Yeah. It's like you, your body starts to really hurt and your mind is in a million different places. You know, the emotional roller coaster of the season and the physical roller coaster of the season. Um, and so talking to Chris Long, he was telling me about – how, you know, smoking weed really helped him to stay calm, to relax. It was like, and obviously Josh Gordon, you know, that crushed his career before the NFL was like, oh, yeah, well, this shouldn't be, you know, this shouldn't be. Because it's not illegal anymore, right? Now, or it's not. Well, a, yeah, it's I mean, not I a, think it's still on the, the list, but it, it's not. They're not as strict on it. I don't know. It's so ridiculous that they, you know, when you look at Josh Gordon's career, here's a guy who just was, you know, absolutely incredible. I mean, and how... I mean, we can be real about it. I mean, that that was fuck that was fucked up. I can't believe that it. was it's fucked like... up. They they took a guy from the peak of his career and suspended him because of weed. And I get rules are rules. I get that. Right, right. But you gotta understand, like, I followed the rules, right? I stayed right. within the lines. I was one right. of those guys because I, I wasn't gonna jeopardize my career because I knew the consequence of it. Right. But I also was a guy, especially later in my career, that took something that was approved every single week which was Tordal, and that shit ruin, ruins your body. It ruins Kills your organs. Your and I couldn't function without it on game day because my body was so beat up, mm. which ultimately was one of the reasons why I retired because I was like, okay, 
I can't just go out here naturally. I'm, I have to take tour all before the mm. game, sometimes at halftime, just to be able to function. And, and for those who don't know, tour all is an extremely strong painkiller. Women take it to give birth. Right, right. This is, That's this, is, this is some strong shit. Um, right. And it's the reason why we have to get blood work throughout the season to make sure that our organs are healthy because we're pumping ourselves with all types of drugs. And they're um, not healthy. The blood not, work always comes yeah, back. Yeah, and the blood work is the greatest. Um, and we're taking prescription drugs, things that are legal, according to the NFL. Um, and you have guys that are taking alternatives that happen to be legal, like like marijuana, that don't have the same side effects and consequences medically. So I wasn't the guy that dabbled in it while I was playing. I wish I did. I wish I found it. Um, well, that's a good point. So that's what I want to see because – Maybe I would play longer. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I never – smoking wasn't a thing for me. But, like – I, if you would have like if I if somebody would have told me that it helped with pain, that one hundred percent, everything's off the table. And I feel like even with and I could be wrong, but it's like if there's ever a drug you're going to take, as far as like it being you know less. And I'm not a doctor, so maybe maybe not. But I just feel like it's less toxic for your body than got, a lot of the other stuff. We got to get a guest expert on here so they yeah, can that's right. It so, I, can, I can't explain it, but I, I do know. You know, a lot of guys that have done it, that do it, um, it's just one of those things. It's not that they want to smoke just to be high. Um, it's no. It's one of those things to relieve pain, um, to rest their minds and bodies, uh, because it is a strain, a very dangerous and strenuous game um, and painful at times. Yeah. No, I mean, I used to take Vicodin and Tordal Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, every week of the regular season from my third year to my ninth year. So what is that? So seven years straight. That's a long time of pumping yourself with, you know, those types of drugs. The blood work would come back and the doctors would be like, you have to stop because there are 80 year old cancer patients who are chain smokers who have better blood than you do. You have no oxygen in your blood. And it was like, I'm not, I can't stop. I can't, I, I can't feel anything on Sunday. Like whatever, yeah. like I can, I can maybe stop for Thursday practice or something like that. When Sunday comes, I can't feel pain. I have yeah. to be able to focus on what's going on. And, and again, and we've talked about this is a matter of putting food on the table. Exactly. You know, so it's like, uh, so yeah, I don't remember, but, but no, I thought it was interesting that, uh, Aaron Rodgers said that. I mean, he, if you got to give him credit for his, just sort of blunt, you know, a his, lot of guys with his, his transparency, his openness. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, <laughs> I wonder how the league's going to respond to it. I know. <laughs> dude, dude, help us yeah, out. Man. Man. Help but us he's, out. He's, we're, we're done. I mean, he's an active guy talking about this. <laughs> um, but but the, the truth of the matter is, um, there needs to be healthier alternatives for pain management. Here. Yeah. 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 I don't think, and I, they've, they've done a good job. Of, I mean, not a good job. They've done a better job. Of figuring out ways to to um, to manage the pain and not give these guys all these drugs, mm. but at the end of the day, when there's there's drugs needed, they give them the ones that aren't right. good for you. So. Right. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do. But yeah, Big Jeff. Okay. So next week we'll come back I, again. We're, I mean, we're just we're getting ready. Like we're twelve days away, man. Well, how many? We're twelve days. Yeah, twelve days. Twelve days away. I, I think I might make make the trip up to you know Glendale. Arizona, you know, see this game. Ooh, I that'd be I might, nice. I think my goal this year is to to do a lot more things on my bucket list, and that's traveling to some NFL games and tailgating. Mm. Um, They'll the put you right on the sideline. You'll yeah, be didn't get the opportunity the to do that, man. We didn't get the opportunity to, to, to tailgate at Arrowhead. We got the smell of barbecue, but we didn't get to enjoy it. So I went to one football game when I was like seven. Outside of that, the only time I've ever been to a pro football game was playing in playing in one. So hey, hey, the rookie running back spoke on that that his first ever NFL experience in an NFL game was a preseason game that he played in. Really? And that was the same for me. Um it's crazy, man, to think that I'd never been to an NFL game until I played in one. And, and have you been to one since you no, retired? I, no, I haven't been to one as a fan yet. Oh. I've watched I'm gonna get to one this year. That's one of the things that I mean. We had COVID, and then I got busy with, with our business. Um, but this year, I have a little bit more freedom and free time. So I'm going to make sure I get to an Arrowhead game for sure. Yeah, um, Arrowhead. Try to get to this opener in Arizona. That, that Arizona would be good. Arrowhead Stadium going to be nuts, man. Yeah, I, definitely. I, oh, the atmosphere. I'm, I'm, ex- I'm going to be in that thing with my shirt off. 
<laughs> Double fisting. <laughs> right behind right behind the players. Bang. Face. That was Bang. a terrible call. <laughs> Banging the drum. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. Oh, I can't wait, man. man. All right, Chiefs Kingdom. Thank you for tuning in one on one. We will see you next week with more Chiefs football from a player's perspective. Big Jeff, thank you, brother. Love you, man. We'll see you next week, bro. Beat the Chiefs. Yeah, baby.